Here we go again, Falcons fan. Your boy, man, Mike here, man. I know a lot of people are so interested in the offense side of ball, and for good freaking reason. This offense is freaking loaded from your boy, Kyle Pitts, to your boy, Kirk Cousins, Michael Penix. Like, the Falcons have guys on the offensive side of the ball that everybody is getting absolutely excited for and rightfully so. But the defense side of the ball, I think we should give these guys some credit. I'm going to get into the comments. This is from the video defensive players to watch for in 2021. So I'm just read you guys questions. Obviously, Yasuke Knight, thank you, man. Can't wait to see what they do this season. Uh, Samuel Davis, I'll be looking to see with the uh, how the defense defers from last year and how uh, sustainable it is in the fourth quarter. And that's a good thing, too, man. Um, the fourth quarter has been something that's been pretty good for the Atlanta Falcons. I think defensively, they've been doing well. It's just that defense uh, offensively in the fourth quarter last year that the Falcons just could not score um no, 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 no. I, I think they were pretty good in the come second thinking about it, they were pretty good in the fourth quarter offensively and defensively. I, I think when we lost Grady Jared, I think things start to kind of get cloudy as far as that's concerned. But um that they'll get better. I think defensively, we just need to learn how to uh uh defend his sacks, man. And I think that's one of the things having a guy like Trice, um, Brandon Doyles, and obviously Arnold Abikiti, I did a video on him. So it's going to be interesting to kind of watch those guys and what they do, uh, Sam. So appreciate that. And then we have the king here. When evaluating a player, I like to equate players' first four years in the NFL to a player's first four years in college. Right now, Richie is going into his senior year. So if he can't put it together, this upcoming season that I think he's going to put it. He's, he's not going to put it together at all. And I, man, I, Richie just is a guy like just coaches just love his style of ball. He, he, he plays very aggressive. He's incredibly smart. Um, he makes the right read. He makes the right play, but for whatever reason, when he's in the game, this weird thing just started to happen. I don't think just that's the thing. He is, it, that's the thing with Richie Grant, man. Just weird crap just happens when he's um, when he's playing, and he's he's a guy that you love. You just love. You get excited about it seeing on the field, but for whatever reason, in that fourth quarter, when you need that one play to stop that one play or t the offense, our opponents, they need to make a a. a, a you know, big play, usually it's on Richie Grant. I think that's the thing that's etched in a lot of Falcons fans' uh, mind is that Richie Grant, he's the guy that goes into – and he gives up a lot of big plays. So, uh, for K, he said, I don't think you have a good grasp on these players. Richie is already playing second string. They made DeMarco the starter. Ellis never played edge. He's a good blitzing linebacker, um, not edge. And Troy is bad. Uh, 4K, sorry, but you're wrong on every last one of those things. Um, Richie Grant was <laughs> not <clears throat> the foul. Uh, Richie Grant was not the backup. Okay, DeMarco was not the starter. Okay. However, those guys receive equal time because the Falcons believe in rotation. That's something with uh, Jerry Gray and they employed last year because, you know, a lot of Richie Grant, there's some it, those areas in his game where he did struggle. And DeMarco came in in certain situations where they wanted to kind of bring him along uh, a lot better than what he was. So DeMarco did see a lot of – uh, time as the free safety and Richie Grant played some some slot and those guys kind of alternated. But to say that Richie Grant played second string, that's not true at all. He was the starter for the Atlanta Falcons and DeMarco was not the starter for the Atlanta Falcons, although he did play in some packages where 
he got a lot of time. So Richie Grant, he is the starter. And yes, he did struggle, but he was not a second string in anything. The Falcons have packages just like most defenses, especially teams like the Philadelphia Eagles, um, the Kansas City Chiefs, um, even the Steelers. Most defenses, good defenses, especially with the depth that they have, you have packages. So it's not that he did not um, – DeMarco took him out of the game. It just, in those certain packages, guys have different skill sets. And DeMarco, in certain situations, he was the better safety at that particular thing because, let's keep it real, Richie Grant did not play well in certain situations, and he gave up some big plays. So, rightfully so, you bring in a guy that's better for that particular um, spot uh, package. Ellis never played edge. Well, that's not true either. Um, if you go back and look in New Orleans, he was one of those guys who used him as a blitzer and on the edge. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it blitzing. You can call it pass rushing. But at the end of the day, he's coming off the edge and he's getting after the quarterback. OK, we can get specific. And like I said, everybody can have their opinion about what it is and what it isn't. Well, again, this guy and Caden Ellis did, in fact, and does, in fact, play the edge okay he plays the edge and he plays the edge he plays in different types of packages that's why he decides so he is a he is indeed a guy with multiple skill sets and at the end of the day that's what it is all right and Troy was a bad pick again not true at all you don't have to like Troy but that was not a bad pick he ended up getting hurt and and like I said it is what it is and everybody got their Everybody have their own opinion. So, um, but at the end of the day, man, the Falcons, um, appreciate you 4K, but, you know, the Falcons have pretty good players, and we got to get used to packages, like guys being subbed out for certain things. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad, but somebody might be better at that particular uh, skill set than he is. And DeMarco, he's a hard hitter. He's disciplined. He's always been disciplined going back to Alabama. So, not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, Georgia Pride, let's see what happens. If he can get it right with multiple defensive back experts, he's not going to do it in Atlanta. Um, I'm referring, I think he's referring to Richie Grant. And like I said, man, Richie Grant is a good player, but he's definitely on his last leg. Uh, Jeremy Schneid, he says Troy is getting uh, some edge work. Um, these guys are going to come off the edge and they're going to blitz a lot. You saw Troy come off the edge um, in blitzing situations and passing situations, just as Caden Ellis, okay? These guys are going to get a lot of opportunities to get after the quarterback. And does like I said, you can call it whatever you want. You can call it blitzing. You can call it pass rush. You can call it whatever you want. But at the end of the day, these guys are getting after the quarterback. And Jude Talk Sports said the f fans are not feeling Richie Grant. And rightfully so, Jude. Rightfully so. This guy, look, he made some big-time mistakes. Um, I think he's better than they think he is. And that that's true because, again, we saw uh, when Raheem Morris came, when he first came to the Atlanta Falcons and he had his um, – and he had his um, press conference. One of the things that when he said is Richie Grant was a whole lot better than what he thought he was. And that's coming from the coach. That's coming from a DB guy. So, again, Richie Grant was in some horrible situations. He cost up a, a few games. And and we and Coach Unchained said this, too. It's like we got to figure out like whether or not if it was his fault. We don't know what the calls were. We know some guys may have missed the assignment underneath, and he had to kind of, you know, uh, it, it was situations where guys missed the assignments underneath, and, and Richie Grant ended up being the guy that got exposed because other guys underneath, the linebackers, the safeties, the cornerbacks, these guys missed their, uh, they missed their assignment, and, and they'll end up doing, uh, putting Richie Grant in a bad position. Uh, linebackers about to eat, and and Jew absolutely. Y'all check out Jew Talk Sports too on his channel. Um, he does some big time breakdowns on players. Also, um, like I said, you got JD 
Bertrand, the youngster, he's going to get some snaps too. Uh, obviously, we got Troy Anderson coming back from an uh, injury. Um, and then you have Caden Ellis and um, J.D. Bertrand, Troy, uh, Troy Anderson, um, Nate. And then, like I said, at the end of the day, man, I think the Falcons are going to be good. The Falcons are going to be good, man. So our linebackers are going to be pretty – uh, the Falcons, our linebackers are going to be. Uh, the real said Raheem is known for his ability to develop players. He took a bunch of no names in LA and made them a decent uh, defense. And I am interested to see what he can do with the talent that is here. Clearly, they see things um, the in these players that we as fans don't. But I don't get paid to coach or develop talent. And like I said, I got supreme confidence. And Raheem, his ability to motivate. And he's done a pretty good job of uh, putting together plans. Um, and like I said, he's not only good on the defense side of the ball, but he's pretty good on offense side of the ball. And that's always been his strength. So, you know, my, my thing is, is, is he ready? Is he ready to take that next step? Um, he did a pretty good job when, he, when Dan Quinn was fired and he, they asked him to come in and do his thing. He did it. You know, at the end of the day, the Falcons just did not think he was ready at that particular time. Um, he agreed, and then he went to L.A., uh, won uh, a championship, and now here we here. You know, now he's here. Um, Adonis, Cody, good take. I think Troy is a player to watch. DeMarco Hillams, yeah, Hitman Hillams, Zach Harrison with this staff. I'm not worried about Ellis or Grant. Uh, but for sure, man, I think, again, DeMarco Hillens is a guy to kind of keep a close eye on. But my guy on this defense to really um, take a step in becoming a better defensive lineman in its entirety to kind of replace what we lost with Calais Campbell is Zach Harrison, man. I think the Falcons are going to have something pretty good with Zach Harrison, man. Um, I wish Calais Campbell all the best kind of how he looked when it come down to his last moments in Atlanta, I already knew that he wasn't going to come back. All right. Anybody that's doing that, he's highly emotional. He's saying, you know, that he's not sure he's going to retire, but uh, coming to Atlanta, you know, he just wasn't, he, he wasn't coming back to Atlanta. So DeMarco Hillam, Zach Harrison, Ellis, uh, I think he's going to be pretty damn good, but, like I said, end day, I think the Falcons will be straight, man. Uh, Isaac Crumbs is Landman, Hillams, and Harrison, who are the, the guys that he's looking for. So thank you, Isaac. Um, Keith Guerin, perfect situation, Mike. I totally agree with Ellis. Um, I don't want to believe Grant is as bad last season. Anderson has agility. The defense wasn't bad up the last season, but I think it – was bottled up and look when you lose your best defensive player especially a guy up front you're going to see some things change and I think that's the thing with uh with the Atlanta Falcons and especially with uh Grady Jarrett and guys like uh Richie Grant DBs need pressure in order for them to really showcase their skills to the uh to the umpteenth degree uh, to the best of their abilities, like, you need to get consistent pressure. Well, the Falcons weren't getting consistent pressure. They got pressure. I think they had 42 sacks. I think it was top uh, – I think it was 21st in, in the NFL in sacks. Um, so, they look, they got some sacks. But at the end of the day, man, like, you need consistent pressure uh, up there. So, like I said, at the end of the day, man, I love what I saw with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, they'll be fine. Uh, Caden Ellis was drafted as an outside linebacker. He's an edge rusher already. Uh, already. Troy Anderson getting hurt uh, meant that we could send him after the quarterback. I've been telling everybody I know, Caden. And, and like I said, his numbers in New Orleans is pretty damn good, okay? He got a lot of sacks there. And I don't care how you get sacks. At the end of the day, get the freaking sacks, and Caden got sacks. And he has a he had a, a, a season where he had eight sacks in a season. So 
I'm fine. If the Falcons need a guy that can get after the quarterback on, on, um, you know, on occasion, uh, or they can uh, uh, get a guy that can get a few sacks, then Caden is that guy. They need a guy that can play on the edge. Caden is that guy. The Falcons have it straight when it comes down to that linebacker position. So, at the end of the day, um, I don't think the Falcons are going to use him a heck of a lot. When you got uh, Ebby Kitty, Lorenzo Carter, and then you got the youngster and Doyle's, as well as um, Braylon Trice, the Falcons will be fine, man. They will be fine. So um, continue to support your boy here and continue to leave the comments, and I will read these comments for you guys um, from this these these videos, man. So, again, this has been your boy, Matt Mike. I'm going to continue to support your boy here at the – um, not only Mad Mike Sports, but Atlanta Falcon Nation. And I am out of here. Continue to uh, check out us on Instagram, too. So you guys have not already um, reserved your tickets for the Red and Black event here in the ATL. Um, head over to Miss Maggie T, uh, Atlanta Falcon Nation. Ask where can you get the link so you can get your tickets. Again, it's twenty dollars, um, and that's all I got to say about that, man. Support your boy. Continue to do with that Falcons, um, man. It's gonna be a fun season for the Atlanta Falcons. That's all I got to say about that. This has been your boy, Mad Mike, and I'm out of here, man. Deuces.